Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the Ask the Apprentice panel session this afternoon. My name is Kasim Chowdhury, and I am the event director for the BAME Apprenticeship Awards, which highlights the talent and diversity in apprenticeships and also recognizes employers and learning providers that are out there working really hard to support apprentices. After what has been the most challenging 12 months of our lives, I wanted to use today as an opportunity to reach out to some of the apprentices in our network to find out just how they've found the whole experience. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to our fantastic panel for this afternoon, um, starting off with Anesu from Rolls-Royce. Um, hello, I'm Anesu Chimanga and I'm a project management degree apprentice at Rolls-Royce. So I'm currently in my third year of a four-year scheme. And Sam, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Hi everyone, my name is Samuel Kasaga. Um, I'm a recent apprentice graduate, having finished my level six degree apprenticeship uh, just in the last year, and I now work in marketing within Pearson. Fantastic. And Raisa? Hi everyone, uh, my name is Raisa Matada, and I'm an apprentice with Jaguar Land Rover. Um, I'm currently in the last year of my four year apprenticeship, and I'm doing a level three advanced manufacturing engineering apprenticeship. Fantastic. And thank you so much, guys, for taking time out of your day to be a part of this panel. I know how challenging times are, and especially with those of you working from home and those of you on shifts, it can be very difficult to sort of take time out for this kind of activity. So I really appreciate you guys for that. Um, so, I mean, 12 months ago, we, we all thought coronavirus was just something that happened somewhere else in the world. And we never imagined that we were, we were going to be on a call in lockdown 12 months later. So I think I'm, I'm going to sort of throw this over to Racer first, because I remember, I remember picking up the phone to Racer at the start of lockdown and just, you know, having a chat because we wanted to do some, create some videos to sort of support apprentices going through lockdown. And I remember you sort of telling me, Raisa, about your experience and, you know, the uncertainty around your job, your apprenticeship. So do you want to describe sort of your feelings at the start, you know, 23rd of March onwards, 2020, you know, what was that experience like for you? I think it was it was quite tough for me. Um, I think like everyone else, I thought that, you know, it'd be over in a couple of months and we'd be back to normal. Um, and obviously a year later down the line, it's not been the case at all. Um, but in terms of my apprenticeship, I, I remember going into work on the 23rd of March and being sent home after the government had announced that we were going into a lockdown. Um, and it was a worrying time, not only because, you know, there was a, a disease on the rise and you know you're worried about your family but also in terms of job security um, we didn't know whether we were going to be keeping our jobs or whether the company could afford to keep us on um, especially being apprentices because we don't contribute the most to a business yet um, you kind of have that worry that you're going to be the first to go but um, luckily um, I was on furlough for four months it was um, the weather was lovely which was uh, a definite perk at the time um, but I had to do online learning for a couple of months um, but I wasn't at work for four months um, slowly everyone started to go back to work and we started to you know it was a blessing to actually see other people outside of the house and talk to other people instead of just from behind the screen um, but there was a lot of worry about job uncertainty um, and what the future might look like and you know whether our apprenticeship would be extended or or what would happen in terms of our online learning as well that took a while to set up. Fantastic so I remember you sort of telling us all about the voluntary work you did just to sort of keep yourself going and keep yourself motivated how, how was that and how did you sort of continue to do that? That was um, I kind of applied for it because obviously I was on furlough for, for a while um, so I applied to be an NHS volunteer and it, it was great. I mean, you know, I think for a lot of people who are isolating, especially people who are isolating on their own, it was very, very difficult for them. And sometimes, you know, having a friendly person to talk to on the phone and, and you know, see how the day was and you know, pick up prescriptions for them and that, it, it 
for me it was a quite a small thing to do that but for someone else it was it was like a really nice gesture for them um so that was lovely and that definitely kept me busy um especially as we had more cases in our area and um, they there was a demand for more volunteers to help as well fantastic well well done and you know that was a, a good deed you did there and I remember sort of you recording your video for us in the summer while on a lovely walk and the sun was shining which it isn't today unfortunately <laughs> So Anesu, over to you, you know, um, working at Rolls-Royce, going into the office. I know you mentioned before we started this call that, you know, you felt really isolated as an apprentice and, you know, having moved away from home to go and live in Derby, to be close to work. How, how did you deal with, with sort of lockdown initially and, and how was the whole online learning and working experience for you? Yeah, no, I think it was definitely a challenge it was something that you had to get used to so I lived in Derby alone and for the first lockdown um it was going to be over in the first lockdown and we'll be back to have, like normal life so I was like no I'll stay and just ride it out and after the first two lockdowns I was like no I'm going home <laughs> I need to see other people but like Grace has said I was also on furlough so I was on furlough for about six months and okay. which was a very long time so I also decided to volunteer but um so I volunteered for an organization looking at how different businesses could recover after COVID. So I use my project management skills from work to um, help a startup company within like understanding the effects of COVID, which is really interesting. So I got, still worked really long hours, started working at like 6 a.m. I was like, why am I volunteering at 6 a.m.? But yeah, it was really good. It was great to get a different perspective because my career has just been focused around Rolls Royce. So it was good to see how other people work and stuff like that. So yeah, it's been quite challenging as an apprentice lockdown, especially this lockdown. I'm in my third year of uni and just had an exam, which is about 15 hours because it had to be taken like during the whole day. And I was like, I miss just being at uni and just doing an exam in two hours. So it's been a very big adjustment. But yeah, I think everyone's adjusted well and we've managed to keep their apprenticeship going and also the uni perspective of it, which has been great. Okay, brilliant. And Sam, final year apprentice, coming close to the end of your apprenticeship. What was it like for yourself? I mean, was there a delay in, in you finishing your apprenticeship because of the lockdown? Um, so there, no, there wasn't, there wasn't a delay in, in, in it, in a sense, um, where it was, wasn't, it was only a few, a month, a month or two due to that. But, um, during the actual first lockdown, because I was a degree apprentice, I was actually also in my final year of my, of my degree. So I was actually writing my dissertation in the midst <laughs> of lockdown and, and that, and that there was, was, it was an experience, um, probably one of the most difficult difficult things I had to pull through because I was a person who used to separate home from work quite a lot yeah. um I'll be a person who would stay who would stay later in the office or stay at uni a bit longer so I can so I wouldn't have to bring my work home um and I had to kind of like unlearn all of that so for for a lot of the first few weeks I found I found it really hard to actually be productive because for a few, for majority of my time as an apprentice and a and a student and, and even as an employee, I didn't I didn't really yeah I didn't have I hadn't I hadn't been working at home I hadn't attached work with home yeah so it took a lot of self yeah a lot of self discipline um, a lot of motivation a lot of a lot of uh, r routine um, it was it was it was so I'm as I'm thinking about it now like I actually used to have uh, alarms so I, I study because of my dissertation um, and also I was working at the same time I was studying for around eight eight hours a day the days I wasn't working and also and then after I was working I'll, I'll study for around four hours after that so I used to like have a routine where I'll you know wake up at seven do two hours then get do work and then have a break and then have an alarm that, that set me for work so just to make sure I was on track while I was also trying to make sense of what's going on in the world so yeah it was it, it was it was tough but it was it was looking back on it it was it was worth it because you know I, I built I've built a lot of I've built even more resilience than than I've ever had um I'm, I'm able to be a lot more disciplined you know I, I know people who are still struggling to work from home till now and yeah. I find it a bit more easily a bit more easier so yeah it was 
it was an experience, I, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can completely um, relate to the idea of, you know, going to an office and working in an office to working at home. And I can understand how difficult that can be, especially when, you know, the whole concept of working from home for young people is probably alien when you're so used to, you know, it's your first time going into work and, you know, it's probably your first job and having to adjust so quickly to home working and home learning must have been a, a massive stress. I mean, part of me thinks, you know, if I had a dissertation to do and there was a lockdown, I'd actually get it done because I have no distractions. Um, you know, half your mates not finishing their exams and going out partying and you, you're there like in the library doing 24 hour shifts in the middle of the night. But I, I can completely understand that, you know, you know, a lot of the times when I was studying, I, I would go to the library because, you know, it would put me in that mindset that this is where I need to study. And home was sort of your haven where you come home to relax, chill and be yourself. Um, yeah. So I can really understand, you know, that whole concept of not being able to separate homework and learning. Um, but, you know, great, great story from yourself in terms of how you've dealt with that. And, and ladies, I mean, if you guys want to jump in here at all, you know, what, what, what sort of tips have you guys got in terms of how you pulled through the whole home learning situation? It's a challenge. I can completely get where Sam is coming from. Um, so I'm working from home as well and having to learn at home. Your days just merge. The hours in the day just merge. It's just have a plan, have a proper structure of, you know, I'm doing this at this time and have breaks because you can spend hours just looking at the screen and not do anything. <laughs> hours, but if you take a break and yeah. come back, you actually do something. It's like I don't think I could yeah. do a presentation in lockdown. I wouldn't get. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I hope. <laughs> I hope you. Yeah, you, you. You guys were finishing this year or a bit and <laughs> a bit better positions, especially when, especially remembering how like how how scared people were at the very beginning yeah. of lockdown, and yeah. you know. Obviously, a bit more informed now, but you know, my 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 mom. <laughs> if I left the house and I'm coming in, I'm thinking I'm, I'm having to like you know wash my clothes straight away, <laughs> take a shower, <laughs> like you know what I mean. And yeah, so that additional the additional stress and pressure of actually yeah of, of you know what's on. actually what? happening with the pandemic on yeah. top of sort of the stresses that you've already got and you know. Like I said, it's it's going to be the, the worst 12 months we would have ever experienced in our lifetimes. Um, and let's hope we never have to experience this again. I just want to take a bit of a rewind now. And I want you all to sort of think about, you know, before you started your apprenticeship. And I want to learn a little bit um, about your journey in, in starting your apprenticeship. And, you know, I want to focus on any issues that you faced. You know, what was the information like um, out there so when you were looking about at that time and you was asking yourself you know I'm about to do my GCSEs what am I going to do after my GCSEs you know where do I want to be where do I see myself what is my career path now I want this to be a bit more of a quick fire answer sort of question so Anessi I'm going to start with your good self you know when you started out after leaving school college whichever one it was you know what led you to an apprenticeship? Okay, um, so slightly different route to everyone. So I actually went to university for two years studying chemical engineering and decided to leave. And I was like, it's not for me. And then ended up doing an apprenticeship, which was a shock to my mom. She was like, who drops out of chemical engineering and I must have gone to university. So yeah, so I, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I had the grades and the background to go do engineering or medicine and yeah so it was either the two and I was like okay engineering seems more fitting so I actually went to uni for two years and afterwards I was like no this is it for me so I came back home worked for a year and then found an apprenticeship which was still in an engineering field I knew yeah. I didn't want to be an engineer I wanted to do something within the field but not be an engineer so I found project management. And do you think you know had you known more about apprenticeships prior to you taking up your degree, you would have gone down that route initially? Yeah, so I actually, so I knew a little bit about apprenticeships, but I went to an old girls grammar school. So everyone was either going to university, aiming for Oxford and Cambridge. And yeah, that was the only route 
I guess there was. I can, I I can definitely can... relate to the whole grammar school uh, <laughs> scenario because I, I also went to a grammar school and I remember sort of talking to my parents about apprenticeships. Yeah. This is going back sort of 15, 15 years, maybe, maybe more. Don't want to give away my age, but it was a long time ago. And I remember, and, and the one thing they said to me was, no, but you've been to grammar school. You can't go and do an apprenticeship. You have to go yeah. to university, um, you know. Uh, yeah. But it's great that, you know, you've obviously, you, you tried university, it didn't work for you. And, you know, you found apprenticeship as your route forward. Rachel, what was it like for yourself? You know, you've gone into something, you know, a young Asian girl probably won't be seen working in JLR, as an engineer, what was that experience like? Talk me through that. Um, I think when I was at school, no one talked about apprenticeships. So I remember doing my A-levels and I was in just going into the second year of my A-levels and I was having a meeting with my head of year and my mum and my dad. And I said, look, I don't want to be here. I don't want to do my A-levels. I loved school. I love learning. I wanted to do something that was practical, something that was hands-on. Um, and they didn't get that. They just pushed, you know, levels you can go to university you can do this you can do that and I was trying to like get across like I don't want to go to university I want to go out and work I want to get some experience um luckily for me my brother's an engineer everyone else went to university after doing their A-level barrier um, and go on and do an apprenticeship and he did a, a degree apprenticeship so they paid for his degree um, you know he had the experience he was guaranteed a job after it so that kind of opened up um, a lot of our extended family's eyes in terms of you know universities aren't the only way forward apprenticeships are a good option um, they are on par with, with going to university and um, in terms of going into an engineering background um, because my brother was an engineer, I had a bit of experience and knowledge about what it might be like. Um, but engineering is a very uh, white male dominated uh, industry and that is slowly changing, um, you know, with more female and more BAME engineers coming into that industry. But it, it is stereotypically very white and very male dominated. Um, so I was worried. And my parents were worried about me going on to uh, a maintenance department, which I have to be honest, I'm the, the only girl on my shift uh, and the only BAME person on my shift as well. So uh, I was worried about that. But um, I think uh, the, the stereotype behind manufacturing is changing. Um, I think there are a lot of the older generation who are still within the engineering sector who hold certain views I, but I think that is slowly changing uh, slowly and surely um, but it was a worry at the time going into it um, but I couldn't have asked for a, a better shift to be working with um, I love going to work every day I love the guys that I work with um, so yeah but it was worrying at the time. Fantastic and I'm, I'm so glad that you've been able to sort of you know pave your own way in, in doing what you want to do and not being held down to doing what, you know, society is asking you to do, or, you know, your parents are asking you to do. And may, maybe think, do you think things would have been different if your brother hadn't done his apprenticeship? Do you think that that challenge would have been harder? I think it would have been harder in terms of people expecting you to go to university um, because everyone else in our family went into the degree, whether they ended up in a role that they got their degree in is a different is a different story but um, everyone went to university um so i think my brother making that decision really paved the way for me to be able to make that decision as well to do an apprenticeship um i have friends who like anessu went to university um and then left after a year or two because they decided it wasn't for them and i can understand the backlash that you might face with that as well um because you're kind of expected to finish university once you start yeah, no, really appreciate that. And Sam, yourself, how did you find out about sort of Pearson and the apprenticeship you're on? Well, yeah, was... um, similar to you, Kesim and Anisu, um, I also went to a to a grammar school straight after GCSEs. You know, somehow I was able to to rack up a few A's and A stars, but, and but I, I you quickly them with your charm. <laughs> maybe a bit maybe a bit of that yeah I, I feel like yeah <laughs> might have helped a little bit um but yeah so after yeah after after that 
I quickly realized that I I I didn't want I was always a person who'd always ask the purpose purpose of certain things and I'd always be the, the annoying kid in class who would ask why we learning this and how does this help with you know with with where, <laughs> with, with with my goals and, and objectives and I quickly realized that they couldn't I didn't, I didn't want to believe university was the only route I could take for me part after even though that was the the only route that was presented to me at the time so I think uh, yeah and crazy enough that was it wasn't it was actually in between me finishing my A levels and me getting my A level results that my whole situation changed with my apprenticeship. I found out about a degree apprenticeship for a friend who also has similar views to me. That's why I hold, I think having yeah, people who surround yourself around is really important. He, he, we both kind of done our research at very young ages and we found out about this scheme. We thought it was too good to be true. We thought, you know, there must be some, point, like, you know, how do you, how do you get a free degree, get paid <laughs> at the same time and get experience? Um, my parents didn't really understand it, but you know, when I explained to them that I'll still get a degree because because that was always always the main thing. They, they always wanted me to, especially being in, being um, parents, being immigrants, being first generation immigrants, um, you know, wanting to ensure that their, their children were were successful because they sacrificed a lot coming leaving the country they were born in. It's an interesting yeah, point you made there, Sam. You know, a lot a lot of parents from BAME backgrounds where they've struggled you know, during their immigration to this country, you know, they've struggled all their life and what they, what their expectations from their children are that they see what, or they do what they couldn't do. So whereas they never had those opportunities to go to university to get a degree to study, they are now trying to live their lives through us, which is, you know, in their head, you know, going to university is the ultimate route to getting a good job and having yeah. security in your life. And I think that's what it is. It's about them knowing that their children are secure, um, which yeah. is why they push us for that, you know, getting an education, going to university. And actually the narrative prior to, you know, apprentices being pushed was the fact that, you know, in order to progress in, in your life, you need to be a graduate. And this was, this was a narrative that was pushed for many, many years. So we can't blame our parents for thinking the way they do but I think what we now need to do is obviously advise them of the amazing benefits that our friendships do offer. And, and you guys are amazing ambassadors for that. Um, unfortunately, yeah. we were well over our 20 minutes that we were assigned. And I did, I did warn you guys that, you know, once we get started and get talking, it will go very, very fast. Um, but I'd just like to ask you all quickly in one sentence, sum up, you know, why you think friendships are so important, starting with Raisa. Uh, with an apprenticeship, I think you get the best of both worlds. You are always a worker and you are always a learner. Um, you're getting paid, you're getting a qualification, you're getting the experience. Um, for me, it's a win-win. I can't see any negatives of doing an apprenticeship. And whenever someone who I come across asks me for advice or career advice, you know, what should I do after I finish college? Um, or school I'll always always say go and do an apprenticeship get the experience um, get the industry knowledge you'll be guaranteed a job for life um, just just go ahead you know go do it brilliant fantastic and Essie um, I definitely would echo what Grace would say I think for me it's that the apprenticeships are seen as not being academic and that's so wrong like we're talking about university and everything you still have to go through university you have to learn to juggle both work and your academic life so you get the academic perspective and also get the practical experience to actually say is this really what I want to do so yeah definitely go for it fantastic and Sam last but certainly not least far away yeah I'll just say apprenticeships um help to answer the question how can I get a job without experience but I need experience to get a job and <laughs> apprenticeships apprenticeships are yeah are, are the way forward they give you that experience they give you the theory as well and and yeah it just it just prepares you to to become someone who who, who will become effective who will become um and yeah and help you progress professionally or personally what you're going to do so I think it's definitely a challenge but it's a challenge worth taking Fabulous, guys. You guys have been amazing, as always, and I really appreciate your time today. Um, 
thank you so much and thank you everyone for watching have a great thank afternoon you. and enjoy the rest thank of the you. conference thank you thank you